Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Summit America coverage. We've got a switch of casters. I'm Zyori. This here is Merlini, and we've got the rest of these best of ones handled for today. But up first on the docket, we've got CMB versus the Sneaky Knicks Assassins. Best of one. What's the good word, Merlini? Freaking sneaky people. So both of these two are TI4 qualifier invitees for the North American bracket. Excited they to sure see who's going to stack up. A lot of people think Sneaky Knicks Assassins is going to come in second behind Liquid. Yeah. And I don't know if North American Rejects wants to let that happen, or CMB for that matter. Uh-oh. So this is a nice sneak preview for Summit Amer North America playoff as well as qualifiers. So get excited. Yes, this is exciting indeed. We can hop right into our draft here and take a look at what everyone's up to. CMB did have that luxury first pick, and they grabbed themselves the Invoker. SNA ban out the Bat Rider and Centaur, and CNB ban out Lycan and Naga. Pretty straightforward bans. They look pretty similar to the last patch here, Merlini. Triant and Nyx picked up by the Sneaky Nyx assassins themselves. Sneaky, sneaky. And tree. Ugh, tree gross. Oh, you don't like tree? Come on, man. He's, he's all the rage. Zero. He gets boots, and he's cruising around. He's branching people, he picking up kills, selling them a leech He hits seed. like a truck. Oh, hell yeah, he hits like a truck. Level one, close to 90 starting damage. It's insanity. Why does it the trees hit the hardest? It's like tiny with Axe Scepter and Triant Protector. They just like womp on people. I mean, it kind of makes sense with the lore. You know, you've got big, but big, Furion big, like a wimp. big barky arms. Well, he doesn't have barky arms. So? He's, he's not made of wood. Triant, man, he's he's made he's of one wood. with nature. He is a he can be whatever he's he wants a, to he's be. He's literally just clubbing people with a giant branch. He has the crubbing, <laughs> crubbing people. Damn it! Oh, well, man. Darkseer, Darkseer's pretty good versus Triant Protector. He sure is. We've seen a lot of Darkseers lately. Yeah, because, just because of the huge team fight potential. Oh, Vacuum quota doesn't matter if you only need one to win a fight. That's a good point, and it just means you can't be throwing around those He's vacuums willy-nilly, but uh, still a pretty potent hero. It's really all about that ion shell cuts through that living armor like butter. Just cuts right through it, right down to the core. But we've seen a lot of Darkseers get zoned out by a solo Trium Protector, so that mm. is always something that you want to look out for in yeah. your draft. Can you actually get experience in your offlaner against a tree? Most of the times it's no, if the tree is played well. But if he plays like a wimp... Well, for Darkseer, it's all about hitting level 2. He's got to get that surge up. Can he hit uh, yeah, two. of course he'll get Ion Shell level 1. And if he struggles a lot, or maybe he takes an early spill... He can always just retreat to the jungle, get a couple of levels Why are there up no odds on this? Oh, you mean there's no bet for CNB, SNA? That there's is, a lot of matches a going on right now. It is a shame, but I mean... It, I would say Sneaky Nick Assassins are the favorites going in. For sure. I, I'd give it a 65. 65 That's yeah. about right. I mean, I haven't seen the Sneaky Nick Assassins play recently, but they're hot They're hot off uh, their their new roster here. I, they're, a lot of them are on my friends well, list, and they scrim all the time. So I hear, yeah. Like, they're hardcore about scrimming. They scream, scrim like five times That's as much good. as EG. Got to play a lot of Dota if you want to master Dota. It's a true statement. It certainly is. Well, Navi doesn't think so. Navi, <laughs> apparently not. But uh, fluff and stuff, drafting Dude. here. That's pretty exciting. So what's exciting. with the Riki Maru ban? Well, he's annoying to lane against now that he can deny like a madman. But I don't know. Um, the smoke Whatever cloud is good. Cares about the nice. Some some people care about the nice. Invoker time. cares about the nice a little bit. No one cares about the nice. Riki Wisp dual lane. See you later, Invoker. Good luck last hitting those creeps. I don't know. It's kind of a weird... He, I mean, he's, he's just kind of annoying. I saw him once since the patch hit, and it was okay. I mean, it was a dual lane versus dual lane mid. He farmed, denied. Was a normal Riki. I think they won. That sounds very unexciting. It was unexciting. Low impact. His changes SA. were unexciting. Now he just denies a little bit better, so he got a little better lane control. The other guy didn't have as much experience. You that was the team is a little bit better. Y yeah, you certainly can. That's oh, very that, astute. That'd be a lot more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him just kill punches Ooh. like over and over. The Raptor. With Radiant Shadow King Strike King. on. I know how much you like the Raptor. Dude, this Raptor is awesome. He's very good for Darkseer. He's exceptionally good at zoning out a Darkseer. Yeah, he's going to zone him out, and then if the Darkseer overcommits, he pretty much negates Surge. Just glimpses him back, and a little Ishka fell there. Old man, old man Darkseer. And he Static can't take Storm it. is just so good versus Darkseer. Yeah, Dude, it's pretty Darkseer. good against Invoker also. Yes, it is indeed. But Invoker generally has like good positioning. You really want to get the Darkseer in the Static Storm if at all possible. Mm. Mm. Visage. Now, this is a hero that's kind of fallen off a little bit, at least in the past few weeks. I haven't seen too much Visage play. He's got a lot of nerfs. Yeah. Grave Chill nerf. He's just slow and clunky. Yeah, but he has Grave Chill. And he has Soul Something. The yeah, Soul Something is still ridiculous. Highest damage spells in the game. I think Visage is still a totally viable pick, but eh, just falling out of flavor a little bit. He's had his time to shine, but still pretty solid here. 
We'll give CMB a little more flexibility, a little bit of map control with those pesky familiars. Five seconds remaining. Hmm. Good team fight potential yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, good. Even team something fight. as simple as like tornado into Vigistun into like EMP plus vacuum wall. I guess that's not simple, but you know a combo that's dirty though, the invoker anti mage, cross wax, and then you just go fighting anti mage and say goodbye to your mana. Big boom boom pow mana voids hurts. We saw it in uh, what was it WPC last night? With Nyx assassin too, that'd be cool. Yeah, ooh, that'd be interesting. Then you get five mana boots to counter it, easy. <laughs> Every time he EMPs. Five mana boots, just the the string of mana boots. That's it just a mass, you would just get mass BKBs versus it. But, let's see. Yeah, so CMB doesn't really have anything versus BKB. That's a little scary. <laughs> Sneaking Nyx Assassins, at least they have, like, the initiate with Nyx Assassin. Team. You can potentially catch someone out with Impale and kill them out. And Treant Protector is very good with his loot, but... I don't know. Well, Sneaky Nick's assassins don't really have any BKB carriers, though, so far. Well, neither team has a carry yet, so you don't know. True, but at most, Sneaky Nick's assassins will get one BKB here, I think. I mean, maybe Puck will have to get one at some point, but that's yeah, still pretty rare. Puck BKB that's, is a crutch, dude. Yeah, that's pretty... I mean, that's the only, I mean, what, is Disruptor going to form a BKB here? Nyx is definitely not a BKB hero. Easy Scepter game. Easy Scepter. Five you know, I'm surprised they didn't upgrade Puck's eggs. That Puck, I was going to say that Puck Scepter... I, what does it do? I still, I still can't remember. I've never seen somebody like get it. Coil duration, like instead of five seconds, it lasts like seven seconds or something. Or okay, six seconds, like from seven. six to eight, and then it makes the break damage go up Whoop by freaking do by a hundred damage. Yeah, that's that's weak sauce, man. Beat. I knew it was bad, but I've I've literally never seen a puck get ag scepter. Not even as a troll. Not even in a pub game. Bro, they'd rather just delete items off the courier than try and farm <laughs> eggs. It's too trolly. It's too much. You can get Dagon too. Yeah, Dagon's way more fun, and it's better. It is. It's just not a great item on Puck, unfortunately. I wish that were it were more viable, but that is not the case right now. Yeah. Well, we'll see what CMB want to pick here. They'll need their carry. They'll need their second support. It's pretty safe to assume Invoker will go mid. I think I would like a support that dumps well in the dark seer, like a mm. uh, THD or something like that. Or okay. Just something with AOE visage. He's good in lane, but at the same time, if you pick dark seer, you generally want at least one other thing. Yeah. Where is old Jackie? He's good. He is good. How come these teams aren't liking him? It depends on what you run him with. Oh, like, yeah, generally, yeah. you want, oh, like, yeah, tell you. <laughs> generally, you want, like, line-based stuns, like mm -hmm. Impale with Sand King, Nyx, Lion, like, mm -hmm. those kind of things, Shackle Shot to lead things off, because all his spells are, like, in line, right. as opposed to someone like Darkseer, who groups them up in a tight punch. Tight punches are good, too, but, um, like, the days of Mag, Jakiro, and Lion are over, it seems. Well, I mean, vacuum into uh, Rasta Ward. It's a little bit of AoE damage there. Some other shocks coming in. He, he synergizes okay. He's all right. But does give them some... Radiant. It's just like, you know. Gives them decent pushing power now, though. If it's an Exord Invoker That's with true. the Familiars and then your, uh, your little wards there. Sneaky Nyx doesn't has no real good way to deal with summons. So, like, yeah. Rasta Wards, Vistage Familiars, Invoker summons, like, no one can really Five clear them out, so... Yeah, and now CMB, if they really wanted to commit to all-in pushing Radiant here, they could drive a DK, Radiant. safe lane the Invoker, DK mid, and um, just knock down towers. Corrosive Breath wrecks that Living Armor on towers. But so do the mass summons that they'll have. Familiars really... I'd be scared of, well. like, a Luna, dude. Yeah, that's true. They could just go the c traditional hard carry Ten route. They ban out the Radiant. Void... Which is a pretty decent ban here. They do have fair setup. If it's an Exord Invoker, you've got your Meatball coming down, and Darkseer does some damage up in that Chronosphere. But, yeah, Luna, I would agree. But CMB will have last pick here, so they can react a little bit. Now, Sneaky Nyx Assassins, they will need a carry of their own. And who is still in the pool here? A Lifestealer could be an option to pair with that Puck. They could grab Luna for themselves. Yeah, They could grab a Weaver here. Weaver and Tree is pretty like solid. Any of those options. Like, Lifesteal will get kited around with Darkseer, and there's a lot of physical damage dealing with him. Oh, as I said, just summons, and he's just mm. not very good at dealing with them. Um, gyro. Uh, I don't know what they like to run. They, do, they actually like to run Void themselves. Oh, D. Oh, Puck off. Oh, D. So, Puck, puck off. No, no. It's Puck mid. OD off. No, off lane, no, off lane Nyx, try lane with the OD. Try lane with the OD. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, try lane with the OD, and Tree and Disruptor will be hanging out in the jungle. Life What's in the world with OD, bro? Yeah, there you go. There's your life stealer final pick for CMB. So OD does very well versus Invoker. Yeah. To be fair. Both teams pass up the Luna, though, which is a little interesting. CMB don't really have a great delivery vehicle for the life stealer. Darkseer is okay. 
But not that's so great. they don't have anything versus VKB except for Dream Protector Ultimate. Yep. So that's it's, it's not bad. It's not great. It's not it's not bad. Yeah, I like this CNB draft a little bit more, I think. The Sneaky Nyx Assassins, they just they need space. They need that OD a lot to more come difficult online. to execute. I'd yeah. say Nyx Assassins. Yes, yes, I think so. I, s I second the notion on that one. That tree's going to have to be in a good position. Uh, IX Mike is going to need to have a decent time in the off lane. And Sna, he should do pretty well. Isn't us usually their mid player? It depends. It rotates. They're one, they're one of those teams. Yeah, it's usually us, but sometimes it's Sna. Okay. Well, Ush is actually slated for the mid lane right now on this OD, so it will be a... Going with a disgusting tri -lane tree puck. OD combo. Tree OD is gross. It's more of this tri-lane puck that I find a little bit uh, interesting here. Yeah, they can get levels. It's okay. Yeah. It's just going to be a dark tier. They can zone them out a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's true. OD matches up better versus Invoker than Puck does. Yeah, so absolutely. That's probably the main reason. Well, IX Mike getting yeah. zoned out a little bit on bottom. He does have the boots already. I see IX Mike play Nyx Assassin a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, he, the, the hero is in the title of their team, so I would imagine it's a, a hero that they like to run a, a pretty fair yeah. bit. OD, or sorry, Life Seal is really good versus Nyx, though. He uh, just doesn't give any flips about the Impale. I wonder if CNB oh, will try and do anything cheeky here, like put the Dark Seer mid and. I think so. Like go aggro try or something, but I just I worry about this Invoker. If he gets smashed really hard by the OD, and even if he plays it well against any in hero, OD has such an advantage, it's ridiculous. I guess most heroes. Yeah, most heroes, but int heroes and int and melee heroes in particular. So it will be a, an illusion rune top and some harass going out. Fluff is not afraid to stand his ground. That Thunderstrike damage. He has that lower magic resistance. Yeah, Thunderstrike is just such a good level one spell as well. Visage got Grave Chill, so not too much damage he could put out relative to old Disruptor. But right, let's introduce some rosters here. We've got CNB on the Radiant side. Team Brazil, Tavo on the position one life stealer. Baga gonna be supporting on the Shadow Shaman. Will be 4DR on the Visage supporting in the bottom lane as well in the mid. Invoker played by King RD and uh, up in the off lane here will be Ned Bone playing on the Dark Seer. And uh oh, speaking of Ned Bone here, he could be in a little bit of trouble. Does not have that surge yet at level one. Whitebeard coming in using that tree leech sleed, but just not enough for the kill. Still, as you mentioned, harassing him out very well and giving Snob plenty of space to farm on this little fairy dragon. I think he keeps, he only ion shells it if he can get experience. Else you push out the lane a little bit too much and your level 2 is way too long delay. It looks like he may be able to get experience. Now it's at that, at that, about that line, so he's all good in the hood. Yep. Now oh, he ate the tree. Oh. This tree. Is that, that the magic tree? I know you, you like that tree. You don't want to eat that tree. Yeah, it makes it really difficult spot. to fog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on the dire side, we do have the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Whitebeard here going to be playing uh, the tree. An appropriate player-hero uh, combo here. Dark Seer will go blow to blow with him. He does have Surge, so that Leech Seed won't do too much, but the body blocking seems pretty potent from Whitebeard. And that Thunderstrike, I don't think it'll be enough for the kill with the tree. Try and trace him, uh, chase him down. Nope. So he's coming under so much pressure right now. Ax Mike is only level 1, and so he's under similar amounts of pressure, but... Darkseer has more levels, more last hits, more deny, so he's doing a little bit better. In the mid lane, we have Invoker versus the OD. OD is not whomping on him, but still doing very well. He's kind of whomping. 9-2 and two versus 4-2. and two. That's not a whomp, then what is Merlini? It's not that bad. Yeah, I yeah, get a Forge Spirit there, but Cold Snap comes out on the Ush. He'll get harassed, but there's your pesky Astral Spirit. And say goodbye to your mana pool, Mr. Invoker. Actually, he only has one int steal up on him now, but... It'll only get worse as this lane goes on, especially once OD hits level 5. That's that magic point when Astral Imprisonment is so irritating to deal with. We didn't really talk about initial wards all too much, and uh, I actually don't see... Are there any dire wards down on the map right now? Did they all get countered? Do you see a sentry down here at the bottom rune? And uh, there is a Radiant Observer, and then another Radiant Observer and Sentry Duo. It might so. dive, I ask Mike, if he's mm. out a little bit too far. There are actually no boots up on life, so there may be rushing on Midas, and Baga on the Shadow Shaman also does not have a pair of booties. Yeah, I ask Mike takes the other shock. They will go past the tower here, but Tavo still actually holding on to a lot of skill points. He's level 3, only has one point in Feast, so nothing in Open Wounds quite yet, nor Rage. Very interesting. But he is the last at leader, so it's working for him here. Very yeah. little aggression. Usually one, one, one one's way. pretty safe at level three. Yeah. Again, cold snap out on Ush in the mid lane, but just harassing. 
White Beard saving his tree armor a lot. He uses it on us occasionally, but if he doesn't use it constantly on him, then it's very hard for him to like dominate an invoker just because he has four spirits. I think Quasiwex gets destroyed by OD. And gonna go in for a gank. Or just team farming in mid. Yeah, Fluff just coming by mid. Uh, leeching a little bit of XP, but you're right, Invoker's actually caught up pretty well in last hits. Now only trailing by about four, and those Forge Spirits are continually being st uh, spammed, giving him a little bit of a leg up. I think the most important part in upcoming T fights, there's two things um, that I'm going to be looking for. Firstly is, can Sna actually kite the Life Stealer uh, through the use of good roots, good defensive astrals, and can they pop his rage prematurely? Ush is trying to harass out King RD a little bit, and can CMB actually pull off any good combos with Darkseer, and can they make Life Sealer like an unstoppable machine? Like, if they surge him and Ion Shell him, he's gonna be a beast in team fights. Uh-oh, 40R, he grabs a double damage rune, doing a lot of damage to Fluff. Fluff comes back in, playing with fire a little bit, gets off the Thunder Strike, and that should be enough damage for your first blood to come out. It certainly will. It's Fluff and Stuff that gets the bonus gold. And IX Mike will just walk back to safely. Nicely played by Sna. Visage thought he had enough for the kill, but 4DR misreads the situation. So close. <laughs> so close, yet so far. So kind of a slow opener here. Let's take a glance at the gold graph, and now Sna will grab a very small lead thanks to that first blood. But pretty even across the board. Both, the, both of the offlaners struggling a little bit. IX Mike grabbing a few more CS than the Dark Seer. In terms of levels, Ix Mike just about uh, halfway through four, Darkseer halfway through level three, and the position ones. The Life Stealer, he is still the last hit leader, number one on net worth, and he is in good shape. Curious to see what build Tavo goes for. Looking at the courier, that will be a hand of Midas. So hard farming Life Stealer here for the opening of this best of one. He needs to get really farmed though, or else he'll just get kited. If he just goes phase drums right now and goes looking for kills, I think he might get some kills, but it's gonna not pay off in that 15 to 20 minute mark when he really, really wants to get kills, because if Snot plays passively, I think they actually have the late game, just because OD's such a huge beast if he gets his farm up, but Ush isn't anywhere close to his minus if he's going for that build, already with boots and bottle, that's a lot of gold that you don't really want to waste your gold on if you're trying to get an early minus. Yeah, uh, kind of an odd smoke gank from CNB, they just smoked up, walked through the river, and then came up the from the low ground here, looking to come up on the OD, and it's just, that's not an easy way to initiate. The smoke was popped, and, well, OD just walked back to the tower. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's really difficult for CMB to play aggressively, though, because of the threat of tree armor. Tree isn't that high level yet. He's only level 3, and he only has one point in living armor right now. That but it's still, it's still something that you have to worry about constantly. Oh, crap, when did he use tree armor? Do we have to... Do we have enough damage? Do we have enough spells to pop it? Are they going to TP react? And CMB just looking to play it safe and out farm them rather yeah. than out gank. The uh, living armor scales really well, but at the first level, it really doesn't absorb that much damage. Only well, they don't know that he scaled level one. It's true, but even just putting that second point in leech seed, leech seed is the very opposite, an ability that doesn't scale that well. It's just damage per pulse, doesn't change the duration, the slow, anything like that. Cool down. Slightly better cool but down, but yeah. still doesn't even really scale that well. Only two seconds at each level. And it's so mana intensive that you don't really want to use it twice when you're chasing somebody down because then you can't living armor. So, still just sort of an interesting build from the tree, but at level four, it'll all level out, grabs that second point in uh, living armor. So, there may be three minus to this game OD, Invoker, and Life Stealer. Oh, wow. Yeah, Invoker definitely going for one. Does he have the recipe picked up quite yet? No, I guess not. A little no. bit slow. He's on. having a hard time farming mid. Yeah, he has half of uh, ODCS. That's about where you expect him yeah, to be. This is where OD really starts to take off. Level seven, and he didn't even grab Sanity's Eclipse. Grabs that third point in Essence Aura just so that he can be that much more aggressive with the Astral Imprisonment, and not have to worry about mana nearly as much. And Invoker just Radiant simply can't keep up in terms of the the damage. Up top now, Nyx Assassins. They will do a three-man push forward into the tier one tower. Dark Seer comes back to the lane, and Nedbone, level four, does surge away. And Tree can't do too much, but still effectively zones him out. Glyph comes. And I don't know if CMB are really in a good position to try and defend this. I think best they can hope for is to try to pressure uh, the bottom tier 1 tower for SNA. But IX Mike is right there, and he can defend a little bit easier than this Dark Seer. Though, as I say that, he does get chickened, and they don't dive it. It's really difficult for them to like pick away at towers, though, just because of the tree and protector. If they want to go for a tower push or a trade, they have to commit to it or just farm it up. I don't think like trying to... Uh, counter push with their slow push lineup 
is going to work out. Maybe once they get level 6 on the Rasta, maybe once they get level 6 on the Vicious, they can put a lot more physical damage on towers. But right now, it's like, well, we don't even care about it. We'll just let you do your thing while we sweep down towers. IX Mike in mid, already looking for a gank. Yeah, Ush is in big trouble here. He way overcommitted on that invoker, thinking he could secure the kill. Threw out the ultimate, but it wasn't enough. Now, throws out the Astral on the Darks here. He may actually survive to tell the tale here. Puck coming in, Living Armor comes out, and they weren't even trying to pursue it. Even just the threat of Living Armor has had a pretty big impact on this game so far, it feels like. Yeah, and there's a regen rune on top if they want to save it for him. Oh, man. No, Ike's Mike will just grab it. Greedy Nyx assassin that he is, but that's okay. They're still controlling the runes pretty effectively. Dyer finally get another observer down, and it will be on the high ground here in the mid lane, but uh, I believe that is their only ward down right now. Yep, sure is. And same goes for the Radiant side as well. This is their only ward up on uh, the high ground, and of course, as I say that, I realize there's an observer here at the top for the Dyer, but just lane wards now, looking for that lane control. As IX, IX Mike rotates to the mid, and Fluff and stuff, he'll rotate up top, looking for a gank on Nedbone. There's your surge away. The glimpse back. They might be able to make this kill happen. Puck just too far away, though. That's rather unfortunate. Snog's level 7 with a Dream Coil available. If only he was further far, uh, further forward. I think that would have been an easy kill. Yeah, I think if he orbs up and then coils, it's really risky since they don't have the damage from the orb, but it still would have been very, very close. Disruptor is also only level 3, so level 1 Thunder Strike is good, but 9 minutes in, it's eh. Yeah, damage does... Really good at level 1, but uh, as you don't level it up, the scaling is not quite as scary. Ooh, a little lag spike there. I think that was just the server, but... Ix Mike reveals his agenda. And, uh-oh. Ush taking some pretty hefty damage. Living armor buys him some time. TP's coming in. Sna orbs forward, looking for a Dream Coil. Catches three. Be able to follow up B here, though. Ash does, or Ush does not have a Sanity's Eclipse. Throws out an Astral. Sna taking heavy damage. He'll be forced to retreat. Now Tavo coming forward. Open wounds on Ush. He'll be the first to go down. Now Fluff and Stuff taking heavy damage as well. Cold Snap enough to finish him off. Sna orbs aggressively. Now he has no escape. There's your Panic Puck. And that's a 3 for no in the mid lane. Double kill coming out for Tavo on the Lifestealer. If Ush had turned around and Astral as the TP came in, they wouldn't have to chase that far. They had to chase a little bit too far, and a nice TP from Lifestealer just completely turned that gank around. And he is kind of Superman right now with Ion Shell and without Tree Root to stop him. They don't really have anything good versus the Rage. Yeah, and he had enough time to farm after that Hand of Midas, and he now has his Phase Boots up, and that made all the difference right there. He was able to just chase him down and cut him down. Well, Snaw, it was a pretty even game, but uh, CNB, they're starting to bring things back a little bit. Still a small gold lead for Snaw, compliments of that top tier 1 tower kill. But, but OD's really far behind now, so yeah. when he was like chased over here with almost no HP, he had 1,400 gold. He went to the side shop, he bought a TB scroll, he TB'd home, he went mid, and he died. And now he doesn't have his Midas. If they save him the regen, then he just farms up his Midas, and then he can just sit and park mid. He doesn't have to waste his gold on a TP scroll, and he would at least have a little bit more reliable gold. So that sequence of events set him back like 600-700 gold. That is really unfortunate. Lifestealer's already had his hand of Midas since I think he had it right around 5 minutes and 30 seconds of very early Midas. It's already kicked in, and he's number one on that. Next Mike on bottom. Margin Baga. He'll get initiated upon enough damage to take him low. Will it be enough for a kill? Oh no, Ix Mike actually gets hexed. He still secures the kill, but now Tavo comes in. There's no escape for the Nyx Assassin. It's a one for one, and it's a favorable exchange for CNB. Yeah, Life Sealer's getting fat. He's already level 11, and yeah, Invoker might not have that much farm, but they have the double Midas advantage. I think they have the better Bush team, and with OD being this far behind, they have slightly better late game at the moment if things proceed as is. But once Nyx Assassins gets level 6 on their supports, they really need those ganks coming out. Yeah, Puck is very close to a Blink Dagger, level 8, with just about 2,000 gold in savings. And uh, Fluff, uh-oh, he could be in a little bit of trouble. Sunstrike will not be on the mark. Ix Mike rotates in, throws an Impale, and everything will be just fine. But yeah, Tree pretty close to level 6 as well. Halfway through level 5, and Disruptor just now hitting level 5. So, well on their way, but still a little bit behind. The Radiant supports, though, they're not much better. Visage is only level 4, still not very close to Familiars. There's your first tower kill, though, as Tavo finishes off the bottom tier 1. Their supports are only useful for damage output, though, whereas Snaz, they really needed to get the kill on the Life Sealer. Life Sealer is almost getting to that point where he's uh, out of control. 3 0 and 1, and he's it's, a, 11, it's a decent start, but it's just a bad omen for things to come for Snaz if Life Sealer is unchecked. And, I mean, it was pretty much just him alone that got that triple kill. I mean, sure, there was Ion Shell, but that was without Rasta Wards, without Vicious Familiar Sons, without um, Invoker really being that farm, no initiate items on him, and. I don't know. I, they, they need to be able to control him. 
It looks like there might be an infest. There's all these support soaking up on bottom. Yeah, they're just roaming around. Shadow Shaman finally hits level 6. So now he has wards online. He'll clarity up. And they may just rotate towards the mid lane and try and take out this tower. Now, for DR, he did have an invisibility rune on this visage. And he's just leeching experience up top, which is good. But if he gets scouted out, he will certainly be in trouble. Ush is walking over. Uh-oh. No idea that he's there, but... Very so often, you get unlucky from the visage perspective. Nope, he'll be just fine. Meanwhile, in the mid, Rasta has put the wards down. Glyph comes out from Sna. And they will make a full rotation for heroes. They don't have sentries there, though. How are they not going to have sentries? Uh oh, IX Mike he initiates straight away. Now Snah hops forward. Whitebeard, he gets hexed up. The tower's falling. It will cost them their invoker. Glimpse back. It's going to cost them their shadow shaman as well. Now 4DR coming in, but there's your static storm. Your coil on two. It's a two for nil so far. About to be three. Now overgrowth comes out. Connects with Nedbone as he tries to zip forward. Now they'll catch him in the kinetic field. Nedbone. Takes a silence from the waiting rift. Snot tanking tower shots. He wants to dive this. One more auto attack. Ought to be enough to do it. They'll find it. Snot survives. It's a four for nil in the mid lane. They do secure that tier one tower kill, but not worth it. Not worth it at all. Firstly, they didn't have sentry there. That was just silly. Invoker was also on the bottom side, so even if they had sentries, the tower has like good enough vision over here that he can just lead off with the impale uh, from the fog. And it's nighttime too, so that makes things a little bit more difficult. And they didn't have life stealer. Life stealer there. They can at least force out a lot more cooldowns, but Sna just using ultimates one by one in very quick and smart succession to get all those kills in. Invoker's not doing terribly well either. He didn't have that great of a laning phase, but he is coming back decently well. Looks like he will be going a necro book build, so look at taking down all these T1s pretty early and getting two towers down this early versus a tree is very, very important, especially the two most important ones for Dire controlling Roshan. Yeah, they've done a pretty good job pressuring towers. We'll see a Dire Observer come down. They'll scout out the Life Stealer. Tree coming in, he was smoked up, but it's only the two supports from Nyx. And they will not have an easy time. Fluff gets initiated upon right away. Rage comes out a little bit early. Sunstrike on the money, but there is living armor there. Now Nedbone coming in. Hex from Baga. Glimps back. That'll buy Fluff some time. Will he be able to survive this though? Tavo chasing him down. There's your next set of open wounds. Other shot comes out. Again, the living armor buying him so much time, but it's just not enough. They've got Shackle. Stretch Armstrong Baga secures that one. Now Dream Coil comes out. Only on the Shadow Shaman. Wards come down as well. Whitebeard takes a spill. It's a two for nil going the way of CNB. But it does cost him their wards. So right now the main deter main factor for team fights is is life still or not. If is life still there or not. If he's there, they win the team fight. If he isn't, they lose. So it's not that they need to just keep him in check somehow he's just getting huge look at his gold right now 2800 gold midas phase boost and drums five zero and one and yeah they're getting kills on invoker here and there some supports but he's your big fish mm -hmm. and he's still way out farming your od top tier one talent for sna under heavy pressure and it will fall radiant uh, use their glyph that buys them some time and well sna they don't have much weight uh, much ability to push quickly anyhow Tava reveals the uh, surprise inside, and they'll just continue pressuring this top lane, at least for now. TP down bottom from the Shadow Shaman. Level 7, no wards, but he will smoke up as he moves forward to try and make a defense. Bottom tower is under well, attack. now they're defending top. They they can't keep losing towers as a trim protector. Yes, they need to buy some space for OD, but losing your towers is not the best way to do so, and they need to start taking risky, risky engagements. Like, both of the times they've taken fights has been, like, outside of their base. This one just led to disaster. This one was also, I think, a 3-0-2 when they committed. So, they can take fights. It just has to be on their hill, on their terms, with their initiation, and not one of their heroes getting caught out OD in the mid and disruptor on bottom to start things off. Yep. And since CNB do have those Necro books, a kind of static, even farm game will go in their favor. They've got a 3,000 gold lead experience barely in their favor but not by much. Top rune gets scattered out. It was the 16-minute rune, and King RD on the Invoker. He'll go ahead and pick it up. He also has that level 1 Necro book now. Not a particularly scary item, but, well, one that does certainly assist against that tree. Every unit helps. Nyx doesn't have his Blink Dagger, though, too, so they don't have to rely on the puck anymore. The supports are getting pretty fat. They also need one on Shadow Shaman, but I don't know if he's going to be able to afford it anytime this game. Visage slowly working on a Scepter, but it's not going to be a Aoi 2000 speed Scepter. Yeah, just that point booster on Brown Boots. Really not the most impressive farm on him so far. Even with these tower kills, you don't have to expect him to be a little bit more farmed, but they have made a lot of room for this Life Stealer, still maintaining the highest level in the game at 13. Two up on the next highest. 
He's also got a Yasha and just about to have a Sanj, so SNY will be the uh, third item for the Life Stealer following that Hand of Midas. They ping out Asna on bottom, but they don't have a good way to catch him without Shadow Shaman Blink. Yeah, they'll TP in. It is Tavo, but like you mentioned, he just blinks back to safety. Pretty easy for the Puck, who has now picked up the ultimate orb after the Blink Dagger. So Sna is starting to come online. We see Mech on both teams now, one on the tree. Or pardon me, one on the Disruptor and one on the uh, DS. Now Tavo initiated on in the bottom. He'll get silenced up before the Rage can come out. Sunstrike flies, Tavo, he now gets caught inside the Overgrowth, does infest, a lot of damage on IX Mike. Out come the Rost Awards, the Mech flies as well, he still survives, but Dream Coil for the counter kills. Shadow Shaman will be the first to fall, and Tavo taking a lot of damage, but still alive, 40R trying to chase them down, OD coming in, that'll finish off the train as well as the Disruptor, and he just right clicks down the Visage. There's a beautiful vacuum back, Ush gets off the defensive Astral, still in a bad position, and he will die as he pops out, stunned from Nyx. Tries to buy him some time, but only so much he can do. Sunstrike not on the money once again. Tavo may get surged up, but totally out of mana now. And that's where it will end a 2 for 3 exchange, I think. Going the discrepancy the between OD and Life Zero is getting larger and larger, though, which is really bad. They needed a little bit more damage to kill him. They had such a good sequence of initiation on him. It was actually really unfortunate that that creep was right there so he could infest out of the overgrowth. But they kited him with overgrowth during the rage, and then they caught him in a static storm kinetic field afterwards, but still, it just wasn't enough damage. He just pops around, right back around with the second rage cooldown. Yeah, I asked Mike just TPs into the tower, takes a lot of damage. And oh wow, they actually burn a dust and miss it. And now IX Mike, he's free to roam for now. Well, if they cut him with that dust, they might have been able to finish him off. He gets a small stroke of luck there. But tier 2 tower takes a lot of damage. They will secure the deny. He actually burns the vendetta on the visage familiar. They denied the tier 2, but still, the team with the Treant is losing towers very quickly. That will take it 1-4 to four now in total tower count in favor of CNB. Life still has S and Y too. He's yep. just getting way, 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 way too much farm for Sonata to handle. And maybe once they get a Scythe of Vice on the Puck and or the OD. Actually, looks like OD is going for BKB. BKB is not bad here. It's not the best because Life Server can just get Basher and still lock onto him. But at the same time, it will allow OD to survive in fights, which he desperately needs to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Life Stealer also uh, 1,600 gold sitting in the inventory. He is 6-0 and 2, and that just shows how little pressure has come his way this game. Sna have had absolutely no response to him. Their their uh, mentality has pretty much been just ignore him this entire game, even in team fights. They don't seem to bring down the Life Stealer. They've been focusing on the supports, the Invoker, and hoping that their carries can do as much damage. But as that discrepancy grows, things become more and more difficult in these team fights. 40R up in the top. He is cornered in the trees, but again, I don't think they know he's there and they won't be able to find him too easily. BKB recipe now picked up by the OD but still trying to farm up that mithril hammer. So it's still a little ways off the mark and Puck's still not very close to the Scythe device either. So what's the game plan for Sna here? Do they just have to gank this uh, life stealer? What can they do to start regaining some momentum because it seems like even though things are they need a, a little they bit can't look for 5v5. 5v5 is where they're going to fall. Yeah. CMB, I wouldn't say they're five of them on stronger, like looking at the draft, but the way the game's going, the way Life Stealer is super fat and Sna is not that fat, um, it's they're they're just gonna win team fights because they don't have a good solution for Life Stealer at the moment. I mean, they can try and throw everything at them, but then they have to deal with Rasa Wars, they have to deal with Invoker, they have to deal with Vacuum Walls. So as it stands, Sna just needs to avoid team fights, take smart fights. They can't lose a big team fight because if they lose a big team fight, they lose Roshan and they lose map control for like the next. 10 minutes so that's the one thing that they don't want to do is lose a big team fight it's far too risky to do so so they just need to look for ganks like on this rasa who's trying to find find his blink dagger he's very very poor darkster also doesn't have a blink dagger he's also very very poor so these are your prime targets to gank even invoker he's pretty strong with necro 3 but here they go as you say that baga almost gets finished off but the mech keeps him alive fluff and stuff throws down the ultimate will glimpse back netbone but it's gonna be a fluff and stuff sandwich i heard that tastes good with peanut butter one but CMB is just CMB. one step ahead. They know what Sna is going to do because they're yeah. not really going to win the farm war. Maybe when they get their sheets, but that's like 15 minutes down the road. So yeah. if they can just predict what they're going to do, which is gank the weak heroes and just be one step ahead of them, then they can maybe win one team fight, get Roshan, and then 
proceed from there because Roshan is a really important for CMB. They can take it. They have the stronger Roshan lineup, but unfortunately, they're on dire side. They still have their T1 up in mid, which is extremely crucial for taking out Roshan, and they're just sweeping down all these towers. Tree's effectiveness has been very, very little this game, I'd say. Yeah, just too many units for that living armor to really make a big difference. Now that Necro 3 is out on the Invoker, things get even more difficult. Top tier 2 falls. Tier 1 in the mid lane is taking a lot of damage. They will be able to finish it off, but CNB, they'll just go straight forward, and I think they may try to break high ground. No Glyph available. Not sure if they're privy to it, but I see no reason why they can't do at least a fair amount of damage here. OD does not have a TP scroll. He has to walk his way back. IX Mike has one. He'll TP now. But Sna not in a great position. Rasta Wards come down. Tower already down below half health. And now they'll join the party. Puck hops forward. Straight on the Invoker. Silence Orb. But that's it. They won't hop out. Tier 3 Tower goes down. Nyx just trying to finish off. The Serpent Wards, Ix Mike, he will take a Cold Snap, a huge Impale, connects with three, and now they'll go forward. There's your OD ultimate. Met comes out to counter it, they still secure the kill on Lifestealer, and CNB dropping quickly. Le uh, Invoker falls, Darkseer goes down to follow. A lot of damage on Whitebeard, but this BKB on Ush couldn't have come at a better time. They get that kill on Treant, but now 40R. He's in trouble as OD port, uh, four stabs forward. Only one left remaining, it's Baga, he tries to TP home, he does make it. Well, I didn't think they won a team fight, but when you go up that hill and you get caught up by a three-man dream coil into a huge static storm kinetic field by disruptor, then you're gonna lose a team fight. So very, very nicely played by those two. And as you said, the OD BKB was huge for that fight. They could have just taken the T3 and backed off, but they decided to press their luck without the Necro book up, and just not the best decision from them. D DS doesn't actually have wall yet, which is a little unusual. Hmm, it would have come in handy in that fight for sure. Everybody was all clumped up. Yeah, usually, you, sometimes you see it at that, like, 10, 11 mark, but... Usually you see it at 6. Yeah, that's more common now. It does a fair bit of damage just straight up. But even the, like, 10, 11 isn't that bad, or, like, the 9, 11. Mm. Here we'll see probably an 11, 12 or something like that. So, not the worst case scenario for CNB. They did get the Tier 3 tower, but unfortunately they don't win the team fight. And now even though both sides get some spoils, I think Sna definitely got the better of that exchange. Now you'll see a Scythe of Ice out on Puck. That will be a four staff just actually complete on the Nyx Assassin. And, uh, well, what did CNB get out of it? Not a hell of a lot. Blink on the Shadow Shaman and almost an Ags on the Visage. They are starting to come online more. It's they a really solo smoke from Shadow Shaman with the Infest Bomb with his newly acquired Blink. They can get a kill on a very high priority target like OD on the back of this. But it's not as close behind. So let's see who gets to jump on who. Yeah. I think whoever gets the jump loses the fight. It will be a 3 on 2. Oh wait, actually it's 3v2. This is going to be bad. I don't think they can save Ush at all. Oh, Tree coming from around the backside, but now they hop forward. Ush, he gets hexed up. There's your Hoya Taya, but it's enough for the kill. And Volker gets that one. Um, yeah, Dream Coil comes out from Puck, but to little avail. Support just not inbound. So there you have it. Easy gank on the OD. Now Nyx, they're in kind of an odd position. They have two at the top, two at the bottom, and they will engage straight head on. King DR will be the target of choice. They'll have plenty of damage to finish him off. And now I think CMB will be forced to retreat. Glimpse back onto the life stealer though. Into the river. He'll just run the other way. Will they have the crowd controls? Oh, the overgrowth off the mark. Ion Shell comes out on the Tavo. He grabs a double damage. Vacuum back. There's your wall of replica. Fluff throws out the ultimate, but still, Tavo. He gets sheep. He'll be able to go ham once he pops out. Puck throwing the orb over. Doesn't hop to it. They will secure the kill on the tree, and that's it. Snow will kind of minimize their losses. Ends up being a one for two trade across that whole exchange. Could have been much, much worse for Snow. Yeah, but it could also could have been a lot better. They could have gotten him in the root. I don't know if they have enough damage to take him down though. Not without the OD. Yeah, especially with the double damage as well. Uh, it just makes Tavo so scary. He's also level 16, so that makes Infest a little bit more potent in terms of its damage. And he also has a Basher. So even with the OD, now he has a tool to deal with that Black King bar. If they had Invoker up here, they can get some damage on the on the Raxes, but without Invoker, it's going to be pretty risky. Yeah, they can drop the Shadow Shaman Wards, but they lost the last team fight. I don't expect them to win this one either. Yep, Wards are available, and King RD has now respawned. Looks like a Force Staff will be his next item of choice as he rotates up. They can catch the they can catch CMB off guard though without the next uh, without the Invoker there. So where are the Radiant Sentries here? They did put two down. I don't know. They've been fight. really lackadaisical about it. And yeah, if Invoker expects a gank, he can also just drop his Necro Book, but he didn't use it at all last fight. Oh, Tavo. He gets hexed by the puck straight away. IX Mike follows up. Vendetta damage. Impale. Will he be able to get off an infest? No. 
I even burned the Dream Coil for it. But still, the position one of CNB, that knocks him down a little bit more. And now Invoker, he's within three digits of net worth. Just about 900 behind that of the Mighty Life Stealer. Glimpse back on the Darkseer. And Netbone, wow, they even burned the Overgrowth for this. Easy kill on the Darkseer. And that will be a two for nil. Maybe Sna can now just move into the Roche Pit. Glimpse is such a strong spell. Uh, if they just kill Life Stealer, they probably can't take it because of Vacuum Wall plus Rasta Awards. But with two of them down, it should be an easy Roche. And now Sna right back into this game. Yep, they certainly are. And they don't have any minus armor, but still, OD does plenty of damage at this point. And he can just chunk down Roshan rather handily. Puck in the top lane, taking some harassment from the three Visage Familiars. That's right, Visage has now picked up his Ag Scepter. So, also hitting level 11. The Familiars that much scarier. Now CNB, they'll rotate over. Rosh falling very quickly. They ping it out. Necro units, will they be able to snipe the last hit? Killed by the Dire, picked up by the OD. Nothing is sniped here. Rost Awards have been wasted in the pit. Baga just gets chunked down by the OD. And it will end as a one for nil, at least for now. King RD now getting pursued. Fluff does not have a glimpse available, but throws out the kinetic field. That'll keep him trapped. And Astral was out on the next. Oh, the Sunstrike on the money. And Puck will fall. Now King RD on the run. I think they'll have enough to bring him down. IX Mike now perhaps in some trouble. Triant does get picked off. A beautiful vacuum from the Darks here. Mike stuck inside. He's going to go blow for blow. Can he finish off King RD? No, but Fluff will probably secure this kill with a Thunder Strike. Too much no. quas. Yeah, it's too much quas. 26 hit points. He survives. And wow. it's only a level 2 Thunderstrike. Still, nice wow. moves from CMB right there. Invoker, clutch plays. But still, they have to deal with the OD, with the Aegis, and he has like the Vice money in just 40 gold. Yeah, that second Actually, second he already has it. Will really hurt. Lift comes out right away from Sna. And now CNB, they will chunk down the last outer tower remaining. That will take the total tower count 7-3, to three, of course, in CNB's favor. And there's just no way Sna can defend this one. OD has, however, taken over as the number one on net worth, which is a scary fact for CNB. That is the first time in this game that Life Stealer has not been number one. There's your Scythe of Ice. They killed Rasta very early that fight too, which is pretty important because he brings a super long disables and without them they just have to rely on their ultimates and just rely on Lifestealer for huge amounts of damage output. He does have a Basher closing in on the Abyssal Blade, but he's died a couple of times when he didn't absolutely need to risk being out in that position. And as you said, Nick Sesson has just been scouting them out constantly. They needed to pick up a gem like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. When they had the edge, and now they've taken a couple too many spills. The Invoker died top here because of it. The Ni uh, Nixus or the Life Sealer died here because of it. They got the Roshan because of it. And here, Dark Seer dies because of it. Two Man Coil comes out on the Tavo as well as Baga. They just want to try and keep this Shadow Shaman alive. Tavo doing a lot of damage. Secures the kill on the Nyx Assassin. Now Ush, he gets CC'd a little bit. Rasta Wards have come down, but that's okay. Sunstrike on the money with the puck. It's a one for three. Buyback on the Dark Seer. He'll try and rejoin the battle. Hush pops the BKB as soon as he respawns, but just taking a lot of damage from the right clicks. Throws out the ultimate. Doesn't have any stacks of the Astral. We'll have enough to finish off the Visage, but now they'll try to drop the hammer onto Ush. There's your overgrowth from the tree. Baga trying to do what he can. Does actually throw out the shackle. Dark Seer joining the party. Vacuum into wall. It's a full team wipe. Dark Seer with the plays. Nedbones buyback. More than worth it. And now Snob. They may very well lose barracks. They have a lot of buybacks, but not on OD. OD still gets trucked there in his BKB. They had three business familiars beating on him and a life stealer beating on him with rage. And he got bashed a couple of times. He knew immediately that he had to do something about it. He life he banishes Tabo, but Tabo's just gonna kill him once his BKB's down, so I don't know. Tabo's big and fat and nasty. Yeah, he really is. They have to get the jump. Gold. And a top lane of Rax fall, no cliff available, no buybacks from Snot either. Now, how will CNB handle this? Looks like they won't retreat. They'll just go straight for the mid lane. They want to try to do crippling damage now. They've got another good five seconds or so before heroes pop up. It's just IX Mike. He's been deaded up already. Tower already down to about half health, but CNB will play this safe, and they will just retreat to their quadrant of the map. And Invoker, he didn't have that much farm early, and he got shit down pretty hard by the OD, and he's been killed a lot of times, but his effectiveness in... Utility and T-Fights has still been exceptionally high with the mass amount of damage that he provides with the Necro book so that Nick Assassin can't do his thing, neither can the tree, and just utility from all his other spells too. Yep. I don't know. He He's just so annoying to play against, especially a Quasi Exhort and one who goes Midas and Necro. It, it's just so difficult to do anything about it. If you get him, you still have like four units beating on you do, doing a ton of damage. If you don't, he'll just Meteor Blast, he'll kite everyone with Ice Wall and Cold Snap, and he just absolutely makes your life miserable. Mm-hmm. 
No easy way to deal with an invoker, that's for sure. Now, following that last fight, Shadow Shaman did pick up a gem of True Sight. So now they'll finally have a tool to deal with this Nyx Assassin. And even in that last fight, they had this sentry down, and as soon as they caught wind of Nyx, he initiated straight away onto the Dark Seer, and that sentry really didn't give them a hell of a lot of intel. So I think the gem is much overdue, and something that will make sneaky Nyx Assassin's lives that much more difficult. Item progression... OD needs to be a lot more fat. He's too far behind, and... You could kind of see it coming when he like got his Midas real delayed, but after that he just still kept dying. He died uh, due to the Shadow Shaman blink dagger and the smoke. He died when he had the Aegis, and he's taken four deaths to Life Stealers two, and it's hurt him very, very greatly. He's only one level behind, but he needs a refresher at this point. Double Scythe on the Life Stealer, and then double BKB as well. Like he can actually just almost one v five of them if he can get his BKB off, but. He's just too far behind at this point to kind of contest a life stealer. Life stealer has his abyssal. He's kind of one item up on the OD. Yeah, the abyssal is scary in particular because the BKB is the only thing that stops uh, OD from getting completely blown up. Now that they have that hard lockdown that'll cut through it, I worry for him in these upcoming team fights. Visage now has a plate mail, probably an assault cross eventually if this game goes on long enough. But C and B are looking to be in pretty good shape. Roche won't be up for a little while now. At least another three or four minutes. Yeah, CMB's in really good shape because they can get like BKBs on their very important heroes, like Life or Invoker and Darkseer, most notably, and then they can't do like anything versus them in team fights, which is which is really a huge problem. What are they going to do versus BKBs? Disruptor useless, Nyx useless, Puck useless, OD is also useless against BKBs, and all they really have is Tree Ultimate, and that's not the best solution. Yeah, it's just not enough, frankly. But Invoker very close to his Scythe of Ice. He's going to hang out here by the side shop until he can pick it up, perhaps. And, yeah, that's, that's just a lot of hexes in this game. That'll be two Scythe on both oh. teams. Then you've got the Rasta on top of that. Yeah, I thought that 40R was going to get caught out. Yeah, he's still invisible, though. They're that, standing right next to each other. Yeah. Whitebeard and 4DR, the invisible buddies. But he'll be just fine for now. Just playing around with these familiars did actually lose one of them to the battle. So CMB just needs to take it slow. They need to get just slowly but surely get the jump on Snot and then just use their BKBs to overpower them. Or, sorry, just use Life Sewer to overpower them with his Rage because, again, they can't really do anything versus him during the Rage. And as they keep map control, retain map control, prevent Snot from pushing out the lanes past, like, here, I'd say... And then they can just control the map, do Roshan, limit OD's farm. If he doesn't get a refresher or something big in the next 5 or 10 minutes, they're going to lose Roshan and lose the game. So, it looks like he's actually going for a Shiva's armor is pretty good versus Life Sealer, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. I would generally prefer the double hex or the double hex with a refresher, but I don't know if he's going to be able to afford that oh, by the time the game's over. That was so unfortunate for CNB. They should have had a kill on that tree, but their gem carrier was just not quite on the money. It is uh, Nedbone on the Dark Seer, and he was at the tail end of the pack. They knew he was there because it revealed the smoke, and they didn't have uh, anyone inbound, but threw down that sentry just a little too late, and the tree blinked back to safety. So, missed opportunity, but still, CNB will take out this double stack of Ancients on the dire side. Meanwhile, Sna are just cornered in their base. Is that the way for CMB to make a mistake? For a squishy hero like Invoker to be caught out with a Blink Hex, uh, farm me out alone. Uh, even Dark Zero or Life Zero at this point, but if CMB just sticks sticks together as five, make sure Life Zero can pop his Rage and secure Roshan, then they should take this pretty easily. But looks like they might actually try to force something. There's no reason for them to force um, force a tower in mid though. Not yet. Ooh, it's a long Roshan timer as well. Two minutes and forty seconds, almost the maximum. That is not good news for CNB. They have so much map control right now, they could easily take Roche, even if they wanted to just burn the Rasta wards to secure the Aegis. It's not a big deal, though, because Snaz not close to any big items. They just finished the Shivas on OD. I guess the biggest thing for them is buyback on OD. But other than that, there's no real difference between 37 minutes and 40 minutes in this game. Both teams continue to play the way they do. SNMB just sieging from the low ground without putting themselves in any danger, and Nyx defending from the high ground. Yeah, and OD actually, did he sell his Hand of Midas? Yeah, he, he, did. he sold it to get the Shivas because right. he thought they were going to push. But, I mean, if, let's say, Roshan did respawn in 10 seconds, and he had a Midas and a Mystic Staff, he really needed that Shiva's guard in order to take the fight. So it yeah, was a... It's not the ideal move for him, but he had to do it because they need everything that they can to win this next fight. They lose the next fight, they lose the game. So might as well just sell everything that you have, save for buybacks, 
and go for the gold. Yeah, puck uh, with an ass or pardon me, with a plate mail as well. Let's see a double Shiva's coming. This is not? this is the best of one, right? Yes. So this is Nick Sassons. They're in a really really bad position right now. I'd say odds are like really in favor of CMB at this point because even if they lose to Roshan, I think that they can still defend for a pretty long time and prevent them from taking their, down their T2s. Like, CMB is just able to push out all the lanes, whereas if Snow pushes out a lane, they get Blink Hex by Shadow Shaman, but they just have much tankier heroes on CMB and just much better counter-initiate. Mm -hmm. Yep. And right now, Snow is just slowly getting more and more snarf. CMB pushing in the lanes like you mentioned and continuing to scout out the Roche Pit. Uh, less than a minute now until he will be respawned, but they are just being very, very patient. 4,500 gold up on the Life Stealer. So he is still rather rich. He can start working towards another core item and then have plenty of gold left for buyback. I'm not sure why Invoker went for Ghost Scepter. He does not need a Ghost Scepter. I would say like BKB is a far safer choice because if OD ult can still destroy him. Mana Burn hits him really, really hard right now. He has 160 in. So yeah. we're talking about 800 Mana Burn. That's so that's why you do not really want a Ghost Scepter this game. Yep. But, um, yeah, BKB would just be much safer. He can BKB out of root. He can prevent just almost all the damage output from OD. Doesn't have to worry about Glimpse, Static Storm, Kinetic Field, Puck Dream Coil. There's just so many things that a BKB blocks that Ghost Scepter doesn't really do anything for. Like, Ghost Scepter will block OD right clicks. Yes. That's about it. About it. I'm trying to think of anything else that it would be very it's useful stop for. Tree from branching you as well, but <laughs> yeah, there's just not a lot of physical damage from Snot outside of that OD. But at year. the same time, he might be thinking the same thing that um, OD was thinking. I need one item to push me over to the edge in case this next team fight goes sour. Yeah, that's very true. But at know. the same time, that's like, eh, I would rather him stay for a buyback. Roche falls very quickly, but Nyx Assassin hops in. He actually snatches the Aegis. There's an overgrowth from the tree. So much damage coming out on SNA, though. They get completely cleaned up. Nyx Assassin will be popping back up. Tavo taking pretty hefty damage as well. They will actually finish off the Lifestealer as Us joins the party. His BKB is on. Can they bring him down? Mechs popped on both sides. 4DR has enough to finish off the puck. It looks like CMB will be able to take this fight. The Stretch Armstrong Shackles coming out. He gets turned into a chicken as well. Where's the damage out on Us? Just click him a few more times. Defensive Astro. I can't believe this OD is still alive. Ix Mike, he's bought back. He's back into the He party. actually lived! He forced oh up the hill! Oh my god. OD is still alive. Ix Mike actually didn't have to buy back. He never died. It was the Aegis. Another defensive Astral. Ix Mike, now he'll finally fall. Maybe one more auto attack. The blink forward from Baga. There's your other strike. OD still alive on the high ground. No, the Mrs. Familiars will finish him off. Sna with a very good hold right there, but they will get cleaned up. Ix Mike's the hero for that fight, though. If he doesn't get the Aegis, Tavo just respawns and destroys OD post BKB. So yeah. if he didn't get the Aegis and Tavo got it, that's almost game, so huge plays by Ix Mike. Whitebeard does get four stab back, and he'll be just fine. And it's just a, a great hold there. Tier 4 takes a little bit of damage, but other than that, Sna, it's an even trade, and they stopped that Roche from being... It's not an even trade, it's a better trade for them. Yeah. Because they, they, oh, yeah. they were in a really poor position at that point. Like, if they get Aegis and just end the game right there with two lives on Tavo and potentially three with buyback, but I actually think he should have bought back in that fight. He could have he could have bought back, bought BOTs, TP on familiars and just cleaned up. Yep. But didn't didn't want to do it. I guess he's saving it for another rainy day. Yeah. You're right. He certainly could have done that. He could have just sold his hand of Midas and phase boots and had more than enough for the uh, BOTs. But still, I mean, even though Snot had a good hold there, that just buys them a little bit more time, and I don't but think that was enough. That's what they need, though. They Because CMB is going to make a dash push with the Aegis, with all these summons just beating on the racks, their T4s, under seed, top lane already yeah. lost. They're, like, under the gun, and they were forced to make a move, and you never want to be the team that has to do something, and they they made a big move there. Yeah, I mean, that that was the best play they could have done right there, I think, but they're still not out of the clear. CMB are still in a great position, and... Snar is still a long way away from turning this game around. There's your hearted Tarasco and the Life Stealer. I wouldn't say it's a long way. It's just one team fight. They just have to execute it well, and they need one more item on OD. If he has Refresher next fight, then I think they can actually win it. They can just constantly kite the Life Stealer with Root for Rage, and then after that, you can just constantly Astral him. You can double Sheep him. You can uh, just dump him Kinetic Field. There's a lot of things they can do, but if he gets a kill on OD during his first Rage, then they're going to lose the fight for sure. Oh, thought he might go in the mid lane, but no, he will just back out, and Nyx walks right by. There is another gem out for CMB, but they're not carrying it. 
quite yet. Darkseer did pick it up this time. Initiation in the mid lane. Nedbone hops forward. And he will get stunned up by uh, the Spike Carapace there. But there's a vacuum into the meatball. Mech comes out. That buys the uh, Sneaky Nyx Assassin some time. But still Disruptor falls. Now OD coming forward. Pops the Shivas. BKB throws out the ultimate. Not enough for any kills. But does soften him up quite a bit. Tavo falls. Maybe Nyx Assassins can start to turn things around here. The Tree Beard falls. And now OD getting clicked down. Do they have the damage to bring him down as the Invoker comes back out of the Astral? He gets turned into a piggy. He falls. CNB take the team fight. One for three. He does have a buyback though, and an interesting choice from Puck going for the AC, but armor is actually very, very useful to his team, although the attack speed is not terribly useful. So I think like mm, even a Vlad's might have been better just because it's more it's a cheaper item, but he's gonna get hexed out. Hex, vacuum back, snah. Maybe he can survive the phase shift. Yep, he survives for now. IX Mike hopping forward. OD is now bought back. They'll finish off the Shadow Shaman. Nedbone on the run. One more auto attack. It'll connect uphill. Now the rest of CNB in trouble. Piggy out on the Visage. They will pursue, and Visage should fall here pretty easily. Yep, definitely will. They and forced out the OD attack. buyback, but they got three kills because of it. And on the opposite side of the river, you have... Lifesteal, who's just been super stingy about his buyback. He actually didn't have it right then, but they're choosing to take a fight without Lifesteal, which is not the best idea. Yeah, well, he was... Oh, oh. Lifestealer, or pardon me, the Invoker finishes off Puck. Beautiful Sunstrike. He's had some really nice ones wow. this game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Lifestealer was... Yeah, he was it, there, it was that, that big meteor blast too really set up the fight for them because yeah. it killed Disrupted and almost killed Nyx Assassin at the start of the fight. And that was during both their Ghost Scepters. So they had to blow a lot of cooldowns and they still take deaths. Yeah. So again, one of these situations where it's a good fight from Sna, but still not the worst case scenario from CNB. They didn't force, or they did force out the glyph. So now they can... Just try and rinse nah, the Not and... without Lifestealer buyback. Lifestealer, mm, he he he's oh, died, he's he died at Roche, he died at other fight, and they were he's dying very, very early on in these fights, and without Aegis, without buyback and BOTs, they're gonna keep losing the fights uh, after that too. So. so third Roche is the only option? Is that what I'm hearing? No, here? they need to farm buyback on him. I think that's the most important thing, or they need to do better jobs of keeping him alive with defensive four staffs, with uh, pipe, mech, like, just like anything that can keep him alive. Vlad's even, so he can life steal his way back up on top of open wounds, and he just doesn't have the support from his team. They have a lot of damage, but not too much defensive capabilities. Yeah, Darkseer did get the gem back in that last fight, and the new one that he bought still sitting in that safety deposit box back home. So CNB have plenty of gems to go around. They will just group up in this mid lane, though, and press forward. Life stealer still not enough to buy back. A thousand gold short, but... They will just press forward. Necro 3 units out. Rasta Wards comes down. Tower back at full health, but no glyph available. They just dive straight forward onto Ush. He can't even BKB. The Abyssal locking him down. Throws out the BKB right before he falls, but he goes down. Now he has no buyback, and this could be the final push here. Merlini Tornado flies through. Tier 3 tower falls. Still no glyph. Won't be coming up anytime soon. Puck forced to phase shift. Blinks back as soon as she pops out. Ix Mike coming forward, trying to buy as much time as he can. Throws out the Impale, but it'll cost him his life. They blink forward. He gets turned into a chicken. Living Armor comes out. Just not enough. Too much damage from CNB. And that was such, such so well executed by CNB right there. They completely caught the Life Stealer off guard with the Blink Infest Initiate from the Dark Seer. And they just got him down to like 10% HP before he could even react. And they immediately blinked, popped out, abyssaled him, vacuum wall. And that's so much damage in a matter of one second that it just completely took Snot off guard. CMB with a clutch game plan in the end too. They could have easily waited for Roshan, but knowing that they can seal the deal right then and there if they kill OD because of that fatal, fatal buyback. And he had a buyback at that point too, or else they lose the, they lose the Rex. So CMP, CMB just constant pressure on OD uh, throughout this game, and they knew that that was a key to victory because so much is riding on him. Yep. That single core lineup with the OD. Well, I guess Puck is a core, but uh, that one carry at this point in the game, if you can lock him down, that's pretty much your golden ticket to success. Lifesteal was a really good pick here because he's really, really good versus Nyx and Disruptor and uh, Puck for that matter. So it was a very, very good draft by CMB. I wouldn't say Snog got heavily outdrafted. I'm not the hugest fan of just a single OD as your late game damage potential, but they almost made it work. And CMB just th that was a super clutch play at the end, though. They just they were under they were 
a little bit pressure because they lose a fight with they lose life stealer they might lose roshan and then lose a the game because of there so they they just completely came in with a different game plan and just eliminated the od immediately from the fight and after that it's just everyone falls like dominoes yeah just a little too much pressure snob really had no easy way to push that game they didn't knock down too many towers they only had three tower kills at the end and well they couldn't because of the blink on the yeah they had yeah. They lost the early team fights because Tavo crushed them, and then they lost the mid game split push because the Blink Rasta crushed them too. And yeah. potentially Blink Darkseer or Blink Invoker or whatever they wanted. Actually, Invoker didn't have Blink, but whatever method of delivery they wanted to use for the yeah. Life Stealer. OD did really well shutting down the Invoker in the mid lane. The problem was the Life Stealer was free farming, and his counterpart on the side of uh, Sneaky Nyx Assassins was Puck, and of course, Life Stealer. Well, it wasn't only that, it's just. Invoker does a lot without items. He had a Midas yes, and Book, too. and he was really underfarmed in the early game, but he still just did so well, much. He still managed to get his Midas before OD, actually. Yeah, which he was did. also a big problem. Even though he got smashed, he still made up for it. Yeah, that that sequence sequence of events really yeah. cost him. Like him teeping back, not getting the regen, and then them losing three people in mid. That was very very costly, and just that snot on the back foot. And it also caused him to lose all their T ones, which you really don't want to do versus a tree and protector. I would say I'm not terribly impressed with Whitebeard's tree. I don't think they incorporated it very well into the lineup. It was very it was far too passive, and CMB just had a very very strong explosive push lineup. And tree is actually very bad against strong explosive push as opposed to split push. Yeah, absolutely. We saw it there that Living Armor just didn't do much against the towers at it all. It didn't do much. I mean, it healed up that tier 3 at the end a little bit, but mm -hmm. that's oops, that's it. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, well, that's game one of four we have for our best of ones today. Roland, what's coming up next? I closed my schedule tab by accident. Liquid EG coming up next. All right, so good game coming up next. Of course, EG are the favorites coming in, but we'll see if Liquid can give them a run for their money. I'm Zayori. This is Merlini. And